Hi guys, the uh, subject of today's rant is the unbelievable optimism would be one way of looking at it. Another way of looking at it is the unbelievable head up the ass denial, the ability to deny the obvious uh, that planet eaters are capable of in particular and more importantly how this, this absolute denial of, of the facts on the table about the impending collapse of this planet uh, even when people have this information pointed out to them directly in their face how they look at this information it, for the few people who do a they either completely just deny it, just completely deny it by uh, by attacking the uh, the people, you know, murdering the messenger, vilifying the uh, the, the people bringing the message, or uh, more likely, well, maybe not more likely, probably about as likely, is that they 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 get the most unbelievable negative which I would say honest uh, evidence put right at their table, right in front of them, and they just refuse to be part of this doom and gloomer. I, you know, I, I, I talk sometimes about these bliss ninnies, but it seems to be a lot of the times that the, that the biggest bliss ninnies are, uh, are in fact uh, just, well, in, in this uh, example, uh, sometimes planet eaters and bliss ninnies have a lot in common. It's, it's not surprising. I'm not going to turn this rat into just another climate change denier rat. I just want to point out that I'm bringing this to you on May 30th, 2011, where the news has just been released that, that more CO2, more CO2 was released into the atmosphere in the year 2010 than in any year, any year in human history. Okay, with all of this attention to being uh, paid, you know, talked about global warming and climate change years and years after an inconvenient truth, for 97% of climatologists have been calling our attention to this. Uh, Last year, more uh, CO2 was released into this atmosphere than, than any year in history. And you see this article, then right next to it is the article how all of these U.S. politicians, now the U.S. already has the weakest commitment on the globe to doing a damn thing. We're the, we're the single biggest violators on the planet, and we have the weakest commitment to taking this thing seriously. I, any semblance of the U.S. strengthening, strengthening its stand on uh, on global warming, you can you, you can toss out the window that these spineless politicians are rolling over with their legs up in the air and hopping on this bandwagon of this of this of this minority, you know, talking about the eco-fascist and this fake environmental agenda. You know, setting up anti-American uh, laws against global warming. So, in the name of being good patriots, I guess we're going to burn this country up. And then, uh, you know, another article going from the U.S. politicians who are getting ready to be not enacting this nine legislation in the near future. You know, more and more countries are, are looking at the hypocritical U.S. And just saying, fuck you guys, we're going to bow out too. So with each passing day, there is more and more uh, bailing out of uh, doing anything about uh, global warming, climate change, whatever you want to, whatever you want to call it. If, if, if you're deluding yourself that, that this planet is going to take global warming seriously, you can you can you can just throw that one out the window, 
There's so many more, but enough of me talking about these idiotic climate change deniers. I've wasted enough of my breath on these morons. It's really not about that. This is, uh, I, I mentioned, speaking of global warming and climate change denial, I mentioned in a rant recently, which I haven't posted yet, about the melting ice caps are, are letting these planet-eating offshore oil drillers in the Arctic Ocean invade the Arctic Ocean. So they're using this evidence of global warming, they're in-the-face evidence of the melting ice caps for these planet eaters to take full advantage of this fact by going in there and ramping up offshore oil drilling in the Arctic Ocean, which will be easier than ever because there's no ice getting in the way of their damn drill bits anymore. So uh, I, I, you know, I did that rant yesterday, so it's not surprising when I opened my email this morning here on Memorial Day, you know, uh, we have how many of our American soldiers being killed in the Middle East today in the name of, in the name of oil drilling. Uh, so I'm, so I'm going to dedicate this rant to the future American servicemen who die in the line of duty and their duty is to keep the price of your gallon of gas for your gas sucking car artificially low. So I'm going to I'm going to dedicate this rant about the about denial and and unfounded optimism and on the part of planet eaters, people in who invest in planet eating companies and most of all, the consumers who buy the Planet Eaters products, thereby keeping them in business and their investors rich. Uh, so all you future dead servicemen, you're doing your job uh, for the American economy and keeping the oil flowing through our gas-sucking cars. And uh, with that, I will, I'm just pretty much gonna read this email verbatim. It, it doesn't matter the name of the author of this email. Uh, somehow, as I mentioned before, I have found my list on this investment uh, newsletter where they, they send out all these ways that you can make money in your investments. And over and over and over again, what they are championing uh, is what I have always said. If you want to make money in the end times, you invest in planet eating technology and this, this is one more of these letters but I wanted to to read it out because you know I, I have you know sometimes I'm criticized and uh, for being a doom and gloomer environmental alarmist well guys what I am is an environmental alarmist doomsday prophet but I, I, I think sometimes people just think I'm one of these damn doom and gloomer eco fascist that's just pulling my my information out of a hat so uh, this what I'm getting ready to read to you at least the first three-fourths of it could read by me I've never read such a perfect summation of my Humpty Dumpty tribe message this is the message that has me convinced that this world, that this planet is on a crash course with, with uh, ecological disaster which very well can end with the complete obliteration of our own species and every species we share the planet with. It's because of the message I'm getting ready to read. Then this is verbatim, not from a doom and gloomer eco-fascist, but from the absolute polar opposite. This is from an investment counselor sharing my message that the best way to make money in the end times is to invest in those industries and technologies that will get us closer to the end times with each passing day. So I'm just going to read this out to you and share to you. Uh, Dear investor, what happens next? Well, big question. The answer is nobody knows but as investors we're always trying to answer this elusive question we'll never know for sure if we get the answer right but we're gonna know damn sure in a few years that you got the answer wrong 
All right, they have me the ultimate answer. So let me read on. All right, we'll never know for sure if we get the answer right, but we must think through the possible answers if we are to stay on the right side of major world events and trends. And remember, he's speaking to you from an investor point of view. Okay, we must think through the possible answers. I've just come back from a three-day meeting in France aimed at trying to answer this very question. As I've told you already, every year the Wealth Protection Club I work with, blah, 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 I'm not going to give you the name of that organization, assembles a group of very long-term oriented investors. Long-term oriented investors. I, I just love the sick, twisted irony of this. All right, assembles a group of very long-term oriented investors to share ideas and insights about the big picture trends happening in the world today and how to profit from them. So if the, you, you know, obviously if the, if the trend happening is, um, if, if the trend happening is, uh, planet eating, and that's what you need to, uh, that's how you profit. Okay, this year one of the topics we discuss behind closed doors, behind closed doors, and I'm trying to figure out how to make this page scroll down, uh, was the trends taking place in the quote, emerging markets. I've mentioned these emerging markets. When you hear the words emerging markets, read above and all beyond the uh, most of all the big three would be China, India, and Brazil. China, India, and Brazil are the three biggest emerging markets hands down on this planet with China taking the, the lion's share of that. So we're going to talk about uh, this is what planet eating investors discuss behind closed doors and they discuss the trends taking place in the emerging markets. There are many different angles and perspectives to this story, such as the growth of the emerging market middle class. This means that these former peasants in uh, China and India and Brazil are entering the middle class. They are uh, their burgeoning economies are allowing them to buy more and more and more of these products that force Mother Earth to give up more and more of her life to support. So you have this huge population consuming more, growing population consuming more and more per capita is what the growth of the emerging market middle class means. Okay. Number two, the slow and painful decline of the U.S. dollar relative to emerging currencies. I would not call it slow, I would call it a tumble, but it certainly will be painful, particularly to those people who continue to hold these worthless paper U.S. dollars. This is why I have turned my worthless paper dollars into physical silver, not paper silver, physical silver, because I understand the decline and fall of the U.S. dollar, particularly in relation to the global economy. As my personal cover my ass response to that, I have put all of my paper dollars into physical silver. I'm learning to connect these dots. <clears throat> Number three, rising inflation in places such as China, India, and Brazil. I mean, they have these huge economies, so now they're facing big, big inflation in their own rising economies. And number four, and I guess this is most importantly, the move away, the move away, this global trend of a move away from a unipolar world with the U.S. at the helm to a, to a more multipolar world where power is shared, power is shared by the U.S. and other strong overseas economies. Read China, India, 
and Brazil, namely China. Okay, you'll read about all of these themes and how to profit from them in this, in, in this investor newsletter he's sending out, but you're going to be reading about these themes and in, in, in all over the place, from the business page to the environment page. I'm trying to connect, connect the dots. I'm trying to bring you into the conversation of the global economy that has me turned into a, uh, an environmental alarmist and doomsday prophet. Okay. And long-term readers of these trends have already come across dozens of interesting ways to play these trends, meaning to play these, these trends to their own economic advantage. And he puts this in bold face. But for me, the single most important trend, the single most important trend on this planet is the growing pressure on the world's finite natural resources as a result of the explosive growth in populations and wealth in the emerging world. He hit the nail on the head. This planet-eating investor is reading the, 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 the handwriting on the wall and is coming out to the exact same conclusion that I am. The single most important trend is the growing pressure on the world's finite natural resources as a result of the explosive growth in populations and wealth in the emerging world. If you don't want to believe it from us doom and gloomer eco-fascists, listen to this businessman uh, investor. Consider the following, and then he, then he lists some things that I've been trying to get you to consider for the past year here on Humpty Dumpty Tribe. Despite the huge jump in the amount of fertilizers being used, meaning, meaning petrochemical fertilizers being used, per acre crop yield growth has gone down from 3.5% in the 1960s during the heyday of the Green Revolution to a growth of just 1.2% now. The, the, Acre by acre, the crop yields are one-third of what they were in the 1960s. At the same time, the world's population is set to grow from over 6 billion, where we are today, we're really at 7 billion are today, to somewhere between 8 billion and 11 billion people over the next 40 years. This is whichever computer model you want to to say that over the next 40 years, our population is going to grow somewhere, uh, you know, and and it's going to, and I think it's going to be closer either to the 11 billion, if not higher, mark or zero, or zero. Okay. So after this, this rise in population is the number one thing. Number, the next is incomes are, ri are rising also, leading to greater consumption of natural resources. Greater consumption, he's talking about on a per capita basis of these finite natural resources driven by higher protein diets, meaning more red meat, especially beef, in the average person's diet, more demand for oil-fueled cars, motorbikes, and air travel, and more demand for basic materials such as copper, steel, and concrete for building better houses. Do you understand the twin evils that are bringing the double helix of genetic destruction pro self programmed into this planet. It is population overpopulation combined with overconsumption, both of them growing at geometric rates that are going to destroy this planet. And now I'm going to go back to, to this. This is a planet eater, the planet eating investor talking to you. India and China alone, which account for two and a half billion people between them grew their economic output at a level last year of over 8%, four times as fast as we grew here. Okay, even if, 
even if population growth in the um, in the emerging world would happen at a dramatically low, slower pace, which is absolute horseshit, even if uh, we, we got some magic population uh, growth decline in these places, uh, even if population growth in the emerging world happens at a dramatically lower pace of growth than forecast, uh, as the emerging world catches up to the developed world, consumption levels will grow along with the pressures on resources. They are the main re well, overpopulation and, uh, and over over consumption are the driving forces for the pressure on uh, on resources. According to U.S. Uh, Professor Jared Diamond, our consumption factor in the West that is. That is roughly 15% of the world population is 32. We are given a consumption level here, reading in the U.S. of 32. This means we consume 30 times more and produce 30 times, we consume 30 times more and correspondingly produce 30 times more waste than, say, your average Kenyan who has a consumption factor of one. Uh, guys, are, are, you, are, are you listening to this? That we consume, Americans consume, 32% uh, times much of the world's resources the average can, as the average Ken Kenyan and, and throw away 32, a corresponding amount. It would be as though the world's population went overnight from 7 billion to 72 billion. Okay, so what he's saying here, if, if everybody on this planet, if everybody on this planet um, uh, had our consumption rates, okay, it would be like having a, a, a planet of 72 billion Kenyans. All right, and uh, th this makes perfect sense to me. This is why the, the people say that you know it would take uh, it would take somewhere between three and nine planets, three and nine planets to feed to give everyone on this planet uh, the standard of living and the consumption rate that we enjoy in the U.S. It would kill this planet. Okay. Everything up to this point, I agree with this man. I am 100% agreement with him, and this is a perfect articulation of the very reason why well, it's the you know why I am an, an, an environmental alarmist, a doomsday prophet, and the chronicler of the downfall of Western civilization. It is the Humpty Dumpty tribe message in a nutshell. It is why I am completely pessimistic, why I'm a total doom and gloomer uh, about the state of this planet. And so now this is where, getting back to this guy, this is where he and apparently millions and millions of other people from Alex Jones to his followers to these climate change deniers, uh, you know, to all of the, these clowns make this, this outlandish jump in logic. It's just like everything he said up to this point, he's getting ready to throw in the trash in the landfill. Okay, back to him. Now, please don't get me wrong. I am not a doom and gloomer. And I am not a frothing Malthusian either. I am a frothing Malthusian. Look up Thomas Malthus if you don't know who Malthus is. Predicting a bitter end for our ballooning population. Uh, he has, he has every, bit of every bit of facts on the table he needs to be a doom and gloomer a frothing Malthusian and a predictor of a bitter end for our blooming, our ballooning global population. Yet he is not a doom and gloomer or a frothing Malthusian. In fact, getting back to him, quite the opposite. I am a big believer in our ability to solve many of the problems 
the world faces now due to the growing stresses on our natural resource supplies. And there will be fabulous opportunities to profit for investors along the way either by investing in resources rich overseas markets or by backing companies that seek to solve the world's resource problems. I'll have more for you on these opportunities in future issues, but for now remember that the investors who will be successful over the next decade and beyond are the ones that back back these big trends and the biggest trend of them all is the massive strains being put on our finite resources by the lightning fast growth in the emerging economies. There you go. Well, he will continue I, to tell me how to profit off of the death of this planet. And, I, and I've shared several of these before, and, and strangely enough, every time he sends out one of his great ideas of how we're going to solve the problems uh, of this planet by investing in planet eaters, it is continually, uh, you know, per pursuing fossil fuels over and over and over again. His, in his investment advice is to invest and uh, in, in, in these more and more extreme ways of, of drilling more oil out of the ground, uh, getting more g gas out of the ground, more coal, it, it is more and more and more of the same dinosaur technology that has got us to the shape we are in, uh, you know, as a species on this planet. That is his investment advice. This is his short-sighted, uh, you know, to hell with uh, the, these, you know, these damn eco-fascists and their doom and gloomers. We're not doom and glooming. We figured out a way to wring oil out of, uh, you know, out of shale. We're taking fracking, uh, you know, to the next level. We're, you know, we're drilling deeper and deeper. We're moving into the Arctic. We've already got the Canadian car sand, tar sands. He's a big believer in investing in Canadian tar sands, fracking, oil shell, de shell development, drilling in the Arctic. This is the way that we are going to solve the problems of, uh, of a growing population with growing per capita, per capita consumption on our finite resources as our fertility levels in our farm fields continues to plummet. I am so glad that he is quite the opposite of a foaming at the mouth uh, Malthusian doom and gloomer because I look at the same facts as this man does and, and I'm sorry guys I just have to vote on the side of Thomas Malthus and those foaming at the mouth doom and gloomers. As long as we follow this man's investment advice, this trajectory, <clears throat> as we saw in the last year, in the year 2010, we will continue to spew more and more and more carbon dioxide and, and everything else into this planet as more and more and more people turn a deaf ear and a blind eye to the very things that, that are taking out themselves, uh, their children, and, and the human race and the rest of this planet. And you couldn't have heard it, and I couldn't have said it any better than this planet-eating investor himself. And with that, I will say, uh, wish a happy Memorial Day one more time to our young men fighting, fighting for the right for the U.S. to drill for more oil and in foreign countries to keep your price of your gallon of gas down a nickel. Have fun out there and enjoy those falling gas prices here on uh, Memorial Day. Bye, guys.